Hey Owning This Life family, it's me MJ with another episode of Owning This Life. Thank you so much for tuning in and every episode that you've tuned in to thus far because today is the final episode of season 2 of Owning This Life. And today we have a very special guest with us. I met her a couple of weeks ago at an event that she spoke about. And everything she talks about and that is in her book speaks directly to the reason for the show. Her name is Dinea Molokwane and she talks about purpose, your ego and all of the things that we've been discussing this season in figuring out who you are underneath the surface. Dinea, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm well. Good to be here. I'm so glad you came. We met a couple of weeks ago at an event where you spoke at. It was supposed to be a picnic and then we ended up sitting inside. <laughs> but I came in a little late in the middle of your talk mm. and I remember thinking to myself, wow, how is it possible that I can meet someone who thinks exactly where I am right now in my life? Mike. So I got your book and man, the first chapter blew me away. Mm -hmm. How did you end up writing the book in the first place? Wow. I think uh, the book is founded on some of the challenges that I had uh, as an entrepreneur, mm. even on a personal level, but more so I come from a township, right? Mm -hmm. So every time I would go to townships, I would see how young people are actually using the powerful tool that they've been given, mm -hmm. which is their minds in a wrong way. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that the problems that we have are actually encrypted solutions. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know that this challenge they're having, the solution is right within us. Mm -hmm. And it is it lies in knowing and understanding how you're designed to function. So that inspired me to write the book. I see that there was a few things that you mentioned with regards to people like in the township and people who grow up in, in non-white communities where mm. we don't understand how important renewing your mind, as the mm. Bible says, is. Um, what do you think um, made you different? How did you realize this in yourself before you were able to tell other people? I think I'm just somebody who's always on a journey of inquiry. I want mm. to find out. I'm a seeker. Mm. And in so doing, there were challenges that I was facing on a personal level, which were also affecting my professional and business life. Yeah. And I wanted to crack the code. I yeah. really wanted to crack the code of success. And that inquiry led me to wanting to find out more about who I am mm. and why. Why am I here? You know? And the answers to that has actually been one of the greatest secrets of my success yeah. because I'm still on the journey mm. of discovery. I was saying to a friend of mine when I was reading um, that we listen to the Tony Robbins of the world mm. and um, I've been reading Robin Chalmers book and I don't think I've ever read something that had all of that information in one place. <laughs> How long did it take to get all that information together? Because some of the stuff is actually pretty detailed, detailed and you have like a course at the end of it for people to help change their own mindsets and their lives. Mm. What kind of process was it putting all of this together? So the idea of writing the book actually started in 2014. Mm. So the ideas were already brewing in my mind, right? Mm. Like I say, being a seeker, always wanting to find out information, I started doing a lot of research. So I also went to your seminars, you know, when the Tony mm. Robbins was, yeah, yeah. were in South Africa, Stanton Convention Center. I'd mm. also be that person, I want to hear what they're saying. I want to find out. Mm. <laughs> so to actually put the entire book together, took me two weeks just to have a manuscript two wow. weeks but i must say there was divine enablement for me to write the yes. book you know when when the student is ready the teacher appears yes. and that's exactly what happened for me mm. so that was the moment and i just you know what from 9 a.m to 3 a.m the following day i was just be sitting on my bed wow. writing <laughs> because the ideas were just coming but the thing is it was always there in my awareness mm. so writing was not such a hassle but yeah, overall, it took roughly three months, maybe, just to finally release the entire product wow. because there's editing involved and all of yeah. that. So yeah, roughly three months. But it was a good journey. Hey? You inspire me because the kind of information in you, you think <laughs> it would take like 10 years to like put all of this information together. Um, is a lot of this part of your experience of your life? Absolutely. Absolutely. The stories that we, we have in our own lives mm. are a mirror of the stories of others. Mm. So being able to share my story was basically opening a door to the public out there to say, hey, look at your story, find mm. your own story in mine. Mm. So yeah. 
what is the reception like from the Nanwai community? Because I know when you talk about self-discovery and learning about who you truly are, the kind of consensus is, well, then where does God fit into the picture? And we know in South Africa, religion is still mm. a very high-ranked position. Um, I mean, ministers have very high-ranked positions in South Africa. Mm. What is the receipt of the book being like in your talks? Oh, very well. Absolutely very well. I think the core of the book as well speaks to understanding that, yes, God is everywhere in heaven, somewhere mm. there, mm. but also the God nature dwells in us. Mm. And the focus is really to shift people's focus from looking out, out there, there somewhere mm. and really saying, hey, look yeah. at this nature in me. Mm. So when the scripture, for, in for instance, says, I can do all things, mm. hey, it's not a joke. Mm. The power, the divine enablement that I talk about, even with writing this book yeah. is actually within us it's just the ability to be aware so people are actually open and receptive mm. they they just didn't know and they are able to actually listen and say wow i never knew this this can actually help me in my, in my own life in my own journey so the reception has been very well i don't even have to to sell this book right it sells itself no i'm sure <laughs> it does because i'm busy selling the book on your behalf i become an agent um so the, the one thing I wanted to talk about is we, we understand if, if you watch all the things and, and go on the internet and a seeker like you mm. are, you understand what limiting belief systems are. Mm. So what I wanted to know is um, how do you inspire people to get past that limiting belief system? Because a lot of us culturally don't understand that our history also mm. affects how we believe now. And I've been talking about the last couple of weeks of... Um, passed on trauma mm. because we have the apartheid is over now but mm. there's trauma that's been passed on yeah. and then we end up sitting with the same belief systems our grandparents mm. for instance have how do you inspire people and motivate them enough to work through that part of themselves yeah that's a very challenging one i must say because that's like you looking at the monster with the new mm. right that you don't want to exist mm. but the, the the whole idea is this Many people want to succeed, but it always looks like they're always break, breaking against the wall mm. every time. Mm. So those are the actual beliefs. So part of the book is actually explaining to the people how our minds are designed to function, mm. that you've got something called the subconscious mind, the conscious mm. mind, and every time the experiences, the emotions that we have lie in the subconscious mind. Mm. So sometimes even if you want to do certain things, it's like the read-only memory of a computer is yeah, running yeah, yeah. automatically and you can't do anything about it. Mm. But the first thing has to be, hey, wait, there's a virus in my computer. Yes. <laughs> you know, that awareness and saying, what is this virus called? Is it a Trojan horse? Is it a, you know, Mm. There's various types. So you, you become aware of it. Once you become aware of it, then you have to say, wow, let me do some research about this. What is mm. the truth about this matter, mm. subject matter? And then the minute you do that, you're able to go now seek for knowledge of the truth about yes. it, right? Once it's there, you install the new software, mm. right? Which is the truth. And then people are able to now progress and advance in the direction of success or where they want to go. I always bring this back to an African um, concept because mm. I feel like in South Africa there are very few people who actually talk about this. Mm. Um, we we actually very we we so grounded in our own belief systems that we refuse to let it go. Mm. But I, I've also said we our children all now have access to the internet. But that is if we are a little more affluent than most people. Mm. There are people who don't have access to the internet and don't actually know that there is something they need to be seeking out there. Mm. And we come into contact with these people every day, people who are working in the buildings where we're at and that kind of thing. How do we then start a conversation with them just to bring them into the awareness that they should be seeking for something mm. or seeking who they actually are and stop seeking things that are outside of themselves? I think those are the best people to actually approach and speak mm. to for the mere fact that the results would be very evident. Mm. If you're speaking to somebody from an underprivileged environment mm. and then you simply show them the principles, because what I realized is that I also have, I also come from a village, right? My father comes from a certain village. Mm. And every time I go to that place, I realize that the mentality is still very much yes. behind. They still believe, give me this, give me that, mm. give me this, give me that. But the minute you start opening up to this conversation and say, hey, do you know that you can actually do this for yourself in actual fact they don't reject that they go all right how can i do that you know and the minute you show them that okay this is where you can start and this is what you can do mm. then they begin to practice that with the little things mm. you start really with the little things just believing that how can i get 
or create a one rand. Mm. Simple, right? I don't have anything today. How can I create a one rand? And you begin to apply these principles. And then somebody just come and say, let me buy you bread. It may not be the one rand, but it is bread, which mm. is even more than the one rand. You mm. understand what I'm yeah. saying? And then the more they begin to see this, it shifts really their, men their mindset completely. Mm. And then they begin to see. And by so doing, they begin to come out even out, literally sometimes out of the environment. Yes. I'm telling you, that's how powerful it is. Mm. They begin to find jobs elsewhere, and then that's how it moves and maneuvers them into a new realm of possibilities. <laughs> I'm really hoping that that happens, because that's why I'm advertising this book so hard, because mm. and we come from a community where the people are oppressed by their own belief systems. Mm. I mean, we came out of oppression, and now we are oppressed by our own mindset. Yes. Um, so apartheid really worked well. Mm. The only issue is, it, there's this wall that you were talking about where people are just hitting up against it all the time. One of the topics that you talk very big about in the book that comes up throughout the book is ego. Mm. Now, I don't think people fully understand ego when we watch films and whenever mm. the ego comes across as this butch guy yeah. who knows he's actually <laughs> soft-hearted on the yeah. inside. Um, what actually brought about the topic of ego itself. Yeah, because ego, that's where people are trapped, right? Mm. That's the bubble people live in. Mm. So there's the authentic self, the one who's within. You're mm. born like that, born with it. Mm. And then there's also the ego. Now, the ego is that self-image, that self-perception mm. where everything, you, you think you're this person, right? Mm. You think the people think this about you. Mm. You think, so it's that entire uh, bubble that people are uh, actually trapped in and again every time people are not living in alignment with who they authentically are mm. they are operating in the ego mm. right so because the authentic self is the god self mm. is the divine self that's with it yeah. so every time you're operating in the ego your you, ego also stands for urging god out it's like oh, you're pushing god out like so that. that's out of alignment yes. with who you are okay. so that is actually what happened because what happens because Operating in the ego changes your perception. Instead mm. of you looking within, the ego always wants to look outside, outside for answers, right? Yeah, it lives in the past, the ego, more than in, in the, the present, present moment, mm. right? So all of those, it's, it's motivated by fear and mm. doubt and pride, all of that, right? Whereas the authentic self is very humble, right? Very humble, very gentle. Mm. And yeah, all of those things. So that is why I wanted to touch on the ego because that is urging. Every time you operate out of alignment with God, your God self, your divine mm -hmm. self, that is when you're operating in the ego. But it's, it, you can't break the ego. Yeah, you no. can't. It takes work. It does. So you describe pain so beautifully mm -hmm. and that pain is the resistance to the change that needs to happen like you were talking about the seasons that change. What are the signs of the change that needs to happen before the pain comes to kind of push us in the right direction? Mm. So most of the time when change comes to you, it comes with a sense of discomfort. Mm. It's like when seasons are changing, right? Mm. When we're moving from summer to winter, for instance, it becomes chilly. Mm. It's something we are not used to. Mm. It takes our, us out of our comfort zone. Mm. And that already is a sign that you have to change. And sometimes you see a lot of things just going crazy mm. in, in your own and life confusing like <laughs> all hell begins to break loose and you want it, those are signals and signs that it's time for you to change mm. and shift so basically yeah it, the, it's that sense of discomfort that people experience before the pain the actual pain yeah, hits, hits them you. because the pain is like i told you i told you you didn't do anything about it <laughs> now it's i'm going to force you to change <laughs> My name is Teho Ratsidi, owner and director of Blue Rose Flowers. We have 12 years experience working with flowers and events. Blue Rose Flowers has been in existence for approximately two years. My love for flowers and plants is what got us here and gave birth to Blue Rose Flowers. Blue Rose Flowers offers fresh cut flowers fruit and snack boxes to both corporates as well as private clients. Our services include educating the customer about the appropriate flowers for their needs. We offer reception flowers, daily deliveries as well as fruit and snack boxes and we deliver this nationally. Blue Rose Flowers does special event flowers which include corporate events, weddings as well as anniversary parties.
You can find Blue Rose flowers at Thatcher's Corner in Four Ways, which is Corner Main and Red Coppin. You can also find us on all social media platforms. So for your next flower and gifting needs, call Blue Rose Flowers. All hell begins to break loose. And you know what? It, those are signals and signs that it's time for you to change mm. and shift. So basically, yeah, it, the, it's that sense of discomfort that people experience before the pain, the actual pain yeah, hits, hits them. You. Because the pain is like, I told you, I told you, you didn't do anything about it. Now it's, I'm going to force you to change. <laughs> wow. Yes. Um, what is the feedback directly that you get from your one-on-one -on -one clients? Because I know you coach people after yes. they read your book and stuff. What is the feedback that you get from people, especially people who come from backgrounds where this idea is so far-fetched mm. well even those who we claim or think that they are civilized it's still a new idea to them mm. so most of my clients for instance I had one who was a fashion designer joined one of my 20 my program 21 days mm. uh, of personal transformation she came in she was like down and out and mm. the business was not go doing so well a whole lot of issues. Immediately she grasped the idea of the 21 days. Mm. All the opportunities began to, to open up for her. Why? Because all those beliefs have been now moved out of yeah, the way. Yeah. And now there's a flow. Because be, the minute you begin to be in alignment with purpose, mm. with who you are authentically, oh, what can stop you, really? <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I like you just said, and it's something I have found out in the last six months, I always thought there was like, a destination to purpose mm. like I'm riding on the road and then I'm getting to the end of the road and then I've won my purpose you know mm. but I've learned through this year that it's a journey and yes. you talk about the journey of purpose mm. what experiences do you think or what events that are happening on that journey do you think we need to pay close attention to the very first one has to be the present purpose Mm. The present purpose, us being here now, conducting this conversation, mm. is us being fully present to this moment, mm. not being distracted by our problems, our yes. challenges, oh yes. my goodness, this and that. So being fully present in this moment is one of the critical keys mm. for you to tap into purpose mm. because all those moments build up to what I call the outer purpose. Yes. When you start now doing things that are more tangible and visible to the people, opening a business, a foundation, all of those things mm. are now the outer purpose. But it cannot happen if you're not fully present here yes. because I do not know what can come out of this conversation you understand mm. so it is very important to be aware of that because the inner purpose is now who you authentically are mm. knowing who you are authentically then fully being present here mm. and then doing that all the time fully being present in life to now create this outer purpose that people think it's their destination yeah. and i've been <laughs> reading a lot about how you need to automate these processes mm. so one of the things i want to know and i know that you're born again right yes so i want to ask you this specific question yes so we 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 are always busy minds always busy cell phones always going off we're always on screens and it's very difficult to quiet our minds mm. and in recent weeks i've been reading and doing a lot of meditation on mm. my own um and i've had both Christian people, non-Christian people have different experiences with meditation. Mm. But I want to know from your point of view, because of this busy world that we live in and we're always having to output achievements, mm. what do you? what is your opinion on meditation and whether it's worth it to learn to become more present in our daily lives? Mm. This is how I would uh, define meditation, right? Mm. Meditation is basically a way of you opening your frontal lobe mm. for you to be able to receive divine messages, basically, mm. right? Mm. That is how I understand it. And this is what I experimented. I experimented because morning in, in the mornings I love doing devotions and you know yeah, yeah. you know reading the Bible, praying mm. and all of that. Sometimes I also do meditate. And then I, I tried the two instances when I don't meditate and meaning just to make sure that I enlighten my frontal lobe. Mm. And then when I don't, I'm telling you I was so shocked at what I discovered. Prayer does the same thing that meditation does. Really? I'm telling you. Every single time I sat down and I prayed, I would feel a sensation on my frontal lobe. And that sensation is the exact same sensation I get when I do the meditations. Mm. Now, prayer does it elevate it even more because it can actually keep your, what they call the vibration and the energy mm. and all of that, in that frequency, mm. right? In the divine. I will call it the divine frequency, right? Mm. It keeps it there. It was so shocking that it actually does the same thing. So I actually condone both of them. For me, meditation is not attracting evil spirits. Yeah. Or so. That is like <laughs> the consensus. Just... Like the devil is going to come and no, you must no. do oil and... Hey. 
I, I think what you meditate on probably is the critical thing mm. that, that could cause a challenge. What are you meditating mm. on? Because even the Bible tells us to meditate on, on the, the word, word, you see. Mm. So if you're just quieting and thinking good things, because the Bible says whatever is good, whatever is lovely, whatever. If you're meditating on those things, what's wrong with that? Yes, because that's the point. I mean, if you listen to all of the, the talks on meditation, none of them talk about inviting things no. in. Or no. It's all trying to just get your mind quiet enough to be able to focus on what it is you're currently doing enough to have that follow you throughout the day this is what i realized every time christian don't understand something they call it the devil yes what <laughs> so, <laughs> so they just need to go do more research about this thing but this is my problem with the church man like i grew up in church but yeah. my issue is that um we've developed a religion more than we have motivated people to actually find out for themselves. Yes. And you don't have to go reading a hundred books to do that. Mm -mm. You just have to get the experience. Mm. And then when God talks to you in that situation, you know, mm. you know, mm. um, w what is your relationship with the church and this kind of conversations? Because I know there are a lot of old school Christian mm. people who are like, no, we, we don't believe the stuff. Mm. You know, how, what is, how do you get the message across to them? Well, I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to get the message across them. All I need to be to do or be is to be my authentic self. Mm. The more they see me doing, yes. being in alignment with God and the results of doing that, mm. that already speaks for itself. Mm. You know, I think more than ever before, church has been this body that has been, you know, pounding a lot of information and this and yes. this and and. Everything is like hanging in the air and there's no practicality to yes. it. So for me, because I can see some of the church people still walk by side, let us show them the results. <laughs> and maybe somehow it will motivate their faith. Yes. Right? <laughs> I, I, I think like a lot of what you speak about here is actually what we would interpret as faith. The other thing is the Bible is, is, is very old school language. And if we mm. had to traditionalize it or bring it back to modern times, a lot of what you wrote in the book would actually align directly to what the Bible says. Mm. But I think also in in all religious belief um, sectors, they, they are a, lot, a lot of this information is already in there. Mm. We're just not using it practically enough. Mm. So, I know that you have a TV show, right? Mm -hmm. That you present. Um, and you were saying earlier that you eventually wanted to be on TV. Is this something, so we talk a lot about also affirmations and how you need to believe in your affirmation for it to come <laughs> true. And when you talk to some people about it, they roll their eyes. They're like, okay, so I'm going to be staring in the mirror or in the shower and yelling at myself that I'm going to be successful one day. Um, but this is something that you wanted. What do you think the steps that uh, happen automatically or that you end up putting in place when you just plan on doing something or you just put it down as an affirmation? I think for me, the experience has been along the lines of if I'm fully present, mm. I'm able to get certain messages and those messages are the ones that define the actions that have to follow from there. Mm. So I don't necessarily, I do have plans like anybody, right? But predominantly, it's plans that are di uh, divinely mm. um, inspired. And then I simply put them down and then I do again the messages that follow from mm. there. And the more I do that, the more I get these things mm. realized. So I know we, we're looking for that specific formula, mm. and <laughs> but it happens differently. I do outline some of the things that people can can do here which is quite critical and really the things that are outlined here are to lead you within mm. so that you can hear right yes, yes. <laughs> so that the signal can work so that that is actually where what i'm trying to point people to listen to your intuition mm. let it be the one that gives you the download of the information mm. that is p personalized for your life right and then the minute you're able to get that you will now implement on that mm. and you you you'll, you'll see the results really really and it works for everything i know Oprah right. spoke about it a, a while back about how your intuition can actually save your life. Yeah. Because women who got up in bad situations responded and something spoke to them and said, don't do that. Mm. And then they ended up not getting hurt. And some of them did because they didn't listen to their intuition. Um, what do you think the difference between... Um, you were saying that there are outside influences and there's people that we end up listening to and people that we end up trusting more than ourselves. Mm -hmm. How do you think the easiest switch is to make from other people to us? Because we can grow internally and, and have more intuition with ourselves, but have this ability to rely on other people because it's just what we've always done, which is the excuse, right? Mm -hmm. um, how do you th how, what do you think the easiest way is to make the switch from other people to ourselves and not feel guilty? 
for feeling like we're pushing them away. Mm. So the first thing that I also touch on in terms of identity on my 21 days, mm. in, f in order for you to know who you are authentically, because that's where we need to go, we need to go within, is to peel off the layers that are already in the ego. Like onion. So th that onion. onion comes up a lot here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to break the ego, mm. right? Breaking the ego is basically finding out the, the truth about these things that are in the ego. Mm. The minute you find the truth, you realize that it, it's all along being a lie. This mm. whole thing, this whole bubble, it's not even there. The things that it contains, you know, the, the minute you empty that, mm. what does it, what's there? Nothing. 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 And the minute there's nothing, you go into nothingness. Mm. <laughs> and nothingness is a space, that big space that is within all of us mm. where the true self, the divine self lies. I love the, the, this information. The reason I'm saying it's a precursor to everything I want people to know yes. is because we first need the information before we can do the actions. Mm -hmm. The problem we have in society in general is we have all the information, mm. but we're not actually taking action. Yes. What do you think the reasons for that is? It's still the mind, right? Mm. We are so used to that. It's a habit for us. Mm. We've created a habit that, oh, I hear you. Oh, well, I hear you. And even sometimes, even though you try to take the action, that belief that says, but this thing's not going to work for you. Who mm. do you think you are? Why do you, why do you believe this stuff? That voice, that voice in the ego is the one that will always make you try to silence and throttle this authentic yeah, stuff. Like, yeah. Shh, don't even do that. Mm. It's not going to work for you. Because it always t tells lies. But the minute you, you always, you know, a wall you have to keep pushing, keep yes, pushing yes. until you break through it. Mm. So the minute you become aware to say, oh, wait, I'm trying to do this, but what is holding me back? And you're like, I, I, I believe I'm not enough. Mm. Oh, that's why. I believe that I'm a failure. Where does this thing come from that I believe that I'm a failure? Then you realize, oh, wait, when I was at school in primary school, my teacher used to tell me that I'm a failure. Mm. My parents used to say, but you are a dom cop and all of mm. those things, you know? And the minute you realize, ah, now I see. Why did they say that? Was it true? And you ask, you ask yourself all, all those questions. I say in the book that every belief is worth examining. Mm. Whatever, you need to check it. Because that can really hold your future. And you create a perception around it as well. You know? Because at the end of the day, like you were saying in the book, everything that other people say to you is not necessarily true. Yeah. Our problem is we never question we what never. other people say. We, we take it as our own belief system. We take it in. And you, sometimes people don't even like when we were growing up. Mm. Sometimes our parents don't say something in that way. They have a different meaning mm. for it. They just don't explain it. But we take it as, oh, that must be in this. Mm. So this is something I'm going to hold on to. Um, I really appreciate this. I'm, I'm, I want to end this conversation because I really want people to get this book. Yes. I don't want to talk about it so much that they don't <laughs> get a chance to get it. Guys, please get Dineo's book. Yes. I'm telling you, it will change your life. I am not playing with this, right? Mm. Um, I've been talking a lot about this throughout the season, talking a lot about how you need to find who you are authentically, who you are underneath the surface of it all, mm. because that is actually what's going to lead you into what it is you need to be for the rest of your life and what you need to be for the people mm. around you and how you're going to affect them. This is the place you need to start. Yes. So thank you so much for your time, for your effort. Thank you so much for even spending the time on doing this book because I cannot tell you, mm. and I'm feeling it again now, while I was reading this book, I'm telling you, there was just, you know, the atmosphere changed. Mm. And I had to take breaks from it because I have kids. <laughs> but every time I came back, it was right back there. It's, it, it, it spoke directly to what it is, purpose is, and where you need to go first. Wow. So I, I really appreciate you. Yeah. I, I'm going to read it again. <laughs> I'm going to give it to everyone. I, I do know. that myself. <laughs> Even I do that myself, right? Because it always needs introspection. <laughs> exactly. Always need to go back yes. and recheck yourself. Yes. Um, I really appreciate it. I really hope that things take off for you. I'm sure it's going to. This is like this is stuff we need this to know. This is the secret. We're in a generation. Exactly. <laughs> this is the secret. And we're in the fourth industrial revolution right now. Yeah. People need to understand who they are in order to do mm. anything after they leave their jobs or after the retrenchments and all of that. As South Africans, we need to understand our core value system yes. from the beginning. Absolutely. And we need to get back to Mandela's values. You yes. know what I'm saying? And yes. I think this is the way to go. Wow. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. Thank you so much for driving all this way. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you so much, MJ, <laughs> and also Owning This Life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Owning This Life family, for tuning in today. Today is the final episode of season two, but today, for me, was the most important episode. The reason I had the conversation with Dineo today was to bring to you guys the information about how you need to find out who you authentically are. 
This information is so important because it helps set you on the path to your purpose, which every one of us should be doing every day. Please like, share and comment on this video and you can email me on info at owningthislife.co.za for any suggestions. To get a hold of Dineo and get involved in her transformation challenge, you can go to www.sheddinglight.co.za. I kinda like